What's up, HG Church? Welcome back to our midweek online series, The Parables. Hey, I just want to say one thing real quick before we get started. Once again, thank you to everyone. Thank you to our church. Thank you to our friends, our family, our community, to the city of Delano, to everyone that is given um, to the two beautiful girls that uh, lost their lives to just a terrible, senseless act of violence. I want to say thank you guys for your support. Um, I believe that we're going to be able to um, help them in such a great way and, re and relieve us such a, a burden, a financial burden, um, as they lay their, their babies to rest. And once again, continue to pray for them. Keep those families in your prayers. Uh, I just want to say I love you guys. Once again, proud to be a part of this church and serve alongside you guys. We are in the parables, and today we're going to be reading out of Luke chapter 21. Verses 1 through 4, it's a short parable, and it's called the parable of the widow's offering. And we're going to talk about a few things here, but really what I want you to keep in mind is I want you to keep in mind the word generosity. And I'm going to start reading Luke 21, 1 through 4, says this, Just then he looked up, Jesus, just then he looked up and saw the rich people dropping off offerings in the collection plate. Then he saw a poor widow put in two pennies. He said, this is Jesus speaking, he said, the plain truth is that this widow has given by far the largest offering today. On Sunday, we were talking about it. What, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. What makes sense is that, um, you know, we have a natural mind. So we can only really absorb things in this world uh, that we see, that we feel, that we, t our senses. Okay. And then there's things that we don't understand until we really start to get a hold of the Word of God, and that's the supernatural. And Jesus is making a statement right here that doesn't really make much sense. He said he saw rich people taking in, you know, chunks of money, a lot of money, and dropping it into the offering collection plate. But then he sees, listen, a poor widow, somebody who's single, someone who has lost their husband and puts in just two pennies. He says this, the plain truth is that this widow has given by far the largest offering today. That doesn't make any sense in our natural minds, but Jesus is going somewhere. He says, all these others made offerings that they'll never miss, meaning they gave out of the abundance of what they already had. Man, if they were rich and they give $100, maybe $100 to that poor widow would be like a million dollars, but to them it was nothing. He says, she, the poor widow, gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. Listen, she gave her all. I want to talk to us a little bit about generosity. I want to talk about our hearts. I want to talk about our focus. And I got three points that I pulled just from these uh, four scriptures. And number one is this, look up, okay? Look up. I think too many times, church, we're so distracted. Did you notice that in the very beginning, the scripture says, just then he looked up. Jesus is watching and observing everything that's happening. I think in our lives, a lot of the times we're not looking up. Have you ever um, texted while you were driving? Okay, we know it's illegal, we know it's dangerous, but I'm pretty sure we might all be guilty of it. Maybe some of you don't. Congratulations, you are amazing. But if you've ever text and drive, you know that it is risky. Why? Because you're looking down. You're not looking up. You're not looking ahead. You're not looking at the road. So you got to look down and you got to begin to either, you know, use one hand or uh, hopefully you're not driving with your knees because if you're driving with your knees, that's even more dangerous. And you're trying to send out a text message to someone else and you're looking down. Or have you ever been somewhere else where maybe you're waiting in a waiting room at the doctor's office or at, uh, when everything was open, the DMV, and you were just on your phone. You weren't looking up. Jesus was always looking up. And so I'm telling you, you got to look up because we're so distracted with everything that's going on in this world, with everything that's going on in our lives. We're so distracted with all the information that is being pumped into us. You know, one of the things that I've done in the past few weeks is I've stopped um, reading a lot of the news. And I like to keep up with it because I like to keep up with what's going on, with what's being said. But I noticed that I was really, really getting caught up in everything going on um, in the world and I was becoming distracted. And, you know, sometimes I feel like maybe, um, you know, maybe it's not a, a texting and driving issue, but maybe it's a texting and worshiping issue. 
Maybe we're really not looking up at Jesus. Maybe we're not really looking up and forward towards others. Maybe we're just have our heads down and we're just really focused on what we want to focus on. And maybe we're just pretending that we really want to serve God. Maybe we're just pretending that we want God to be the Lord of our life. I'm just, I'm just talking to you for a minute about this because I want you to be able to keep your focus on Jesus. And so instead of reading all the different things on the news or on my phone, Instead, I've been, I've been putting the word of God inside of me. And so I love this first part of the scripture of the story because the scripture tells us that Jesus looked up and he saw. And that's what we have to do as men and women, as followers of Jesus Christ. We have to stop being so distracted that we got to look up and we got to see just the past few days, church, man, we have done such a great work. And I say it again, I'm so proud of us. But if we did not look up and see, then we would not have been able to help these families. You know, the scripture in Philippians chapter four, verses eight, it says this, it says, so keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real. Let me just put this out for you. You know what is authentic and real? The word of God, the words of Jesus. You know what's gonna bring you life? the words of Jesus. You know what's gonna help you stay on the right path in your life, in your marriage, for your family? I promise you, the word of God. This is what's gonna keep you on a good path. This is what's gonna keep you in a good place. This is authentic and real. So keep your thoughts on that. What's honorable and admirable, what's beautiful and respectful, what's pure and holy, what's merciful and kind. Listen, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising Him always. So instead of looking down, instead of not watching and not seeing and not observing, I'm calling you to look up. And that leads me to my second point, which Jesus was doing. And that is this. Number two is this. Pay attention. You have to pay attention. If you're looking up and you're observing and you're watching, you have to look for the opportunities that God is trying to give you. You know, if we were not looking up, if we were not paying attention then we might have missed the opportunity that we had this past weekend to help those two families. I was talking to Jason and I was telling him that, um, you know, after we got the news on Thursday, I believe, that Friday when I had gotten up, my wife had went to work and, um, and I was at the house and I began to kind of, I don't know how to explain it to you, church, but let me just say the Holy Spirit began to move inside of me. And I was telling Jason that, it was kind of like, he was like, this is what I need you to do and I need you to do it now. And I was joking around with him because I was saying it was such a, a prompt movement um, by the Holy Spirit that doesn't happen like that that often. I was telling somebody else that like, God is not like just always like, do this, do that, do this, do that. It wasn't, it was very, um, it was subtle, but it was real, but it was prompt, it was a push. And I got up and I text Ryan, I said, Ryan, um, can you meet me at the church? Cause I wanted to use his camera. I said, I got it, we have to film a video. Look up, pay attention. God has opportunities in front of you. And so we came to the church, we filmed a quick video and that video uh, went viral in our community. And people from all over were sharing because they saw a need, they saw a hurt and they wanted to be a part of the solution. They wanted to be a part of the healing process. They just wanted to be a part. They knew something wrong had happened. And like I said, people are made in the image of God and they don't even know it. But if we're not looking up, we're not looking forward, if we're not observing, if we're not watching, if we are not paying attention, if you are not paying attention, if you're not having an ear to listen for the voice of God, through the word of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can you imagine if I would have missed that opportunity? Can you imagine if I would have said, nah, I don't, I don't think we, I don't really know if we should do that. Can you imagine if I would have, we would have missed out on God? And that's what I don't want is I don't want us to miss out on God. I don't want you to miss out on God. So I'm telling you, look up and pay attention because you have to pay attention to your heart. You have to pay attention to what's going on inside there. What are you putting in? You got to pay attention to your fruit. What are you producing? What are you growing? You gotta ask yourself that every day. What am I growing? What am I producing? Am I getting better? Am, is my life looking more like Jesus? Am I looking more like the Word of God? Am I becoming who God wants me to become? You gotta ask yourself those questions. You gotta pay attention to your heart. 
Are you looking, church, for godly opportunities? Are you waking up in the morning and you're saying, God, today I desire for you to use me. You've blessed me. You've given me resources. My life, man, you've just done so much good for me in my life. You've restored me. You've helped me. You've rehabilitated me. You've brought me to a better place. And so now I'm here because I know there's people outside of my realm that need your love, that need your help. They need you, God. So I'm here. I'm available. Are you looking for godly opportunities? Because that's exactly what God is going to do if you're obedient, if you're sensitive. Listen, if you're paying attention, and you're going to know this, church, you're going to know real quick when, you, when I read this scripture and you check yourself, you're going to know what's really going on inside of you because the scripture in Matthew, Jesus speaking, Matthew 6, 21, he says this, he says, for your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. Your heart will always, will only pursue what you value as your treasure. So if your job is your treasure, then your heart's going to pursue that. And that's the only thing that, that you're going to value. If money is your treasure, then guess what? You're going to pursue that. And that's the only thing that you're going to value. Listen, and this is not a bad thing, but if your marriage and your family, if that's your treasure, which it might be a part of your treasure, but it shouldn't be all of your treasure, then you're only going to value and pursue that. But listen, but when the word of God gets inside of you, when Jesus gets inside of you, then people will start to become your treasure and you'll start to value them. And that's where you'll say, God, I want you to use me. Where's the opportunity? I need to pay attention to what's going on so I can be used by you, so I can be a part of helping someone else. For your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. And my last point, church, is this. Two pennies. I like this because the scripture says that, that the widow, um, that Jesus was watching, and he saw everybody, he saw all the rich people just dropping money in the plates like it was nothing, okay? Like it was tradition like it was just something that they did or even maybe they wanted to be seen by other people look at how much i'm giving or look at what i'm doing but the widow came in humble the bible says poor and put in two pennies and jesus tells him the plain truth is this is that the widow has given by far the largest offering today how is that possible because this is a heart issue that we're dealing with if we're going to learn to be generous we got to deal with our own heart the widow gave two pennies which was way more than everyone else why because it was all that she had. So when I say two pennies, I want you to think that I need to give my all when it comes to serving the Lord. Jesus looked up, he observed, and he paid attention, and he noticed that the woman gave more than everyone else. So I'm calling you to give your all, to give everything, to give so it means something, to give, listen, give to please God. Don't give to please yourself. Don't give to show everyone else. You give because you love God and you're grateful for what he's done in your life. And you're saying, you're saying, God, I'm looking up, I'm watching, I'm observing, I'm paying attention, I'm looking for the opportunities. I want you to use me. And so I'm looking, where can I be used, God? I'm not distracted. I'm not just thinking about myself. I'm not texting and worshiping, but my eyes are fixed on you. And I want, I want to have the poor widow's heart. I want to have the heart where, where everybody's watching all the rich people. But, but God, you know that I'm doing my best. You know that I'm giving my all. You know that I'm doing everything that you're calling me to do as best as I can imperfectly. But gosh, that's why we're talking about your grace. We cannot be generous without the grace of God. It's the grace of God that empowers us to be generous. And so I'm so excited church to see um just the move of god in this city i was telling some of my friends i think something is stirring up here what what the devil uh, uh what the enemy wants to use for something wrong and evil i believe god is going to turn it around and we're going to be that light continually we're going to be active we're going to be moving in this city we're going to be loving we're going to be sharing the gospel we're going to be used by you, Lord, whatever it is, whatever it takes, we're looking up, we're looking forward, we're watching, we're observing, we're paying attention, we're looking for the opportunities, listen, and we're going to give it our all. The two pennies, if it's all we got, it's yours, Lord, and you got to tell God that. 
Everything that I have is yours, Lord. I want to give it to you. The scripture in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16 says this. It says, we will show mercy to the poor. Listen, and not miss an opportunity to do acts of kindness for others. I'm going to say that one more time. We will show mercy to the poor and we will not miss an opportunity to do acts of kindness for others. Listen, for these are the true sacrifices that delight God's heart. Now, I don't know about you, but my desire is to please God. I want to please God with my life, with my faith, with my action, because we know that faith moves the heart of God. And so I don't want to miss an opportunity, and I hope you don't either, church. Look up, pay attention, listen, and give everything you got. Even if it's two pennies, give it all because you love Jesus. Amen, church. I pray that that message ministered to you. Um, what I want to do uh, as we receive our tithes and offerings is I just want to read Hebrews 13, 16 to you real quick one more time. And it says, we will show mercy to the poor and not miss an opportunity to do acts of kindness for others. For these, listen church, this is the word I want you to hold on to. For these are the true sacrifices that delight in God's heart. When Jesus was watching the rich people give, There was nothing sacrificial about what they were doing because they were giving out of their abundance. It didn't mean anything to them. But the language that is used here, what the writer is saying is that when you give, it's got to mean something. Give so it means something. Give so it pleases God. And so that's what I want you to take away is that um, while I build my relationship with Jesus, I got to learn how to give. I got to learn how to tithe. I got to learn how to sow. And it's not always something easy. Listen, it shouldn't always be easy. There's going to be times where God's going to put it on your heart and he's going to ask you to do something that you normally wouldn't do. And that's where your faith begins to build up in him. You trust him even more and you believe that he's going to see you through whatever you're going through. Listen, and he's going to continue to open doors and increase you. Why? So you can do even more. So let's pray. Uh, you'll see all the ways that you can give. And let's just pray. I pray. Once again, I'm thankful for our church and um, for us stepping up and uh, being obedient to God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today, Lord, for um, your people, for HD Church. I just thank you, Lord, that, man, we got a church that, that loves you, that um, is obedient towards you. We got a church that looks up, that looks forward, that watches, that observes. We have a church that pays attention. We have a people that, that are building up and they're willing to give their all. Just like the poor widow woman gave her two pennies, Lord, we have a church that's willing to give their two pennies. Whatever their two pennies might be, God, I'm just praying right now that you see that, that you see our hearts and that, you, that you're moved by our faith, Lord, that we trust in you, Lord. And I pray right now that as we honor you, that you begin to increase us, build us up internally, help us, God, and then open doors externally, God. Give us increase in our lives. Help us, why? So we can do more for others. In Jesus' name, amen.